Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12, and this is our automation series. In this video, we're going to be looking at saving throws. It won't be a particularly long video because it's quite straightforward. Um, but as we get further through this, it will get more and more complicated, believe me. So, so what I've done is um, I haven't touched the automations for saves at all. I've left everything off for that, just to show you how it works in the base game. Uh, quick reminder, we are on Foundry version 12 and we're in the D&D game engine 3.3.1, which is our stable version that we know a lot of the modders are working towards and making sure that they are stable on this platform so that we at least have a period of time where we have a stable Foundry regardless of um, version 13 coming out from Foundry whenever that actually comes out the uh, the D&D 4.0 the, the 2024 rule books all of that lot we've got a stable platform so onto Sorryman I've added a charm person because it's a really straightforward simplistic spell that requires a, a saving throw so uh, if we so again keep an eye on the chat when I click charm person it comes up and says, oh, you're casting Charm Person. And of course, I've got that description if I want it. This is all core game. And it's telling me that I am targeting a goblin. So I want to be able to do that. And it's saying that there's a DC 11 wisdom save throw. So if I make sure I've got the goblin selected, when I do that, it's going to ask me to make that roll. Uh, and I'm going to make that roll. And uh, poor goblin. <laughs> so you can see it tells you what the spell is. The saving throw that's needed with the DC in the chat there, which is pulling straight from Soriman's character sheet here, based on his uh, spellcasting ability for that spell. Um, and it's giving us that opportunity to roll dice. It's not telling us whether it's uh, advantage, disadvantages. We're just clicking that. And then it gives us the result of that roll. It doesn't tell us whether it passed that roll or not. Um, however, in the base game, it's quite easy to see because we've got the DC just here in the chat anyway. So as long as this isn't being spammed with other events going on, it's quite easy to say oh, it should be 11. Oh, we've got a zero. We clearly failed it. But it doesn't apply anything. Just say, yeah, congratulations. Now, as the DM, I need to kind of go, oh, wait and a minute. I need to add on the charmed thing. Now, previously, defreds would have been the thing we used for that. Um, but we don't have that at the moment. And we are only looking at MIDI QOL at this point. So we're not looking at CPR. We're not looking at GPS. We're not looking at MISC. We're not looking at DFREDS. We're only using core MIDI. And that at, at the moment, that doesn't apply anything in the base game. So let's look at our settings in MIDI QOL that affect saving throws. So we'll go to my configure settings, MIDI QOL. Now there isn't anything on the front page here that is relevant to that apart from role automation we already have on. But if I go into the workflow settings, uh, that's, again let's just try to make that a little bit clearer. In the workflow settings I do have some options here. Now this GM bit is talking about auto attack roll, fast forward attack damage rolls etc so this is not talking about saving throws on this front page we need to go to workflow and if we scroll down slightly there is this section here which is about saves and you can see auto check saves is currently off uh, and there's a number of other things we've got options here so we want to turn this on but we have a number of options so yes and everybody can see the results um, see uh, all can see the results and the save only the game master sees it all see the results and the roles let's click on that one yeah just for you know but again you need to choose whatever works for your game what, what you want your players to see as well do we want to display the saving throw dc well it, it is in there in the chat box already but let's turn that on uh, display if save has advantage disadvantage well we're going to turn that on because we want that. Now that doesn't mean we're going to see it in this example because we're only doing a charmed and it's no, there is no advantage or disadvantage um, for this. We're not going to necessarily see that but we want it in there. Now in this box here, search item description, there is the default if you make a saving throw you take half damage. Yeah, that applies to most spells. But your items that you may have 
probably haven't got them yet, but later on you might have them. You might have an item that um, that gives you a different, rather than a half, it gives you a quarter or something like that. So by ticking this, it will check those items to see if the item, whether it's a spell, a sword, whatever it might be, has something in that description that says, ah, oh, right, well, you get this on the saving throw or this happens on the saving throw. So it's a good idea if you're using automated saves just to have that ticked anyway. Uh, if you encounter problems later on, you can debug that specific item. So I'm going to leave that on. Default saving throw multiplier. If I make my save, the damage is going to be 0.5, so half damage. Yeah, that's the default in the rules, so we're going to leave that. Do we want to play? We do we want to prompt our players to roll saves? So, if the goblin is casting charm person on Soriman, Soriman's player, do we want them to be notified to make that save? Well, I would say yeah, we do. Now, this is where we've got a bunch of different options. So we can say yes, automatically roll it. So the player doesn't get to roll it; it just rolls it for them and tells them the result. I don't like that personally because I want my players to do the role. Or there's a few other options we can use here to say this is going to request the role. So these are additional. So let me roll that for you. Let me roll that for you um, uh, with the with query uh, monks token bar rippers epic rolls. You can choose those other add-ons to do that. Now my preference out of those is I like to use Monk's Token Bar because I don't necessarily need those other things in there and not every saving throw is an epic roll. So I would use Monk's Token Bar but I've not got that installed, we're not looking at that today so I'm just going to go with chat message. So it's going to give them a chat message to say hey you need to roll, roll a saving throw. Um, and again we can do the same for the Game Master rolls. We've got it on chat message but we could say well auto uh, and show roll dialogue. Okay, so this is prompt the game master to roll saves, uh, unlinked and linked. So auto means that MIDI will roll the save for the actor. Otherwise, the game master will receive a a, a prompt in order to do that. So um, let's turn both of those to auto roll and show dialogue for this purpose. Now this last one is a timeout before rolling for players. So what you can do is say, hey, look, I want to prompt the players to make their roll. They've got 30 seconds or whatever we choose to for them to rate their roll. And if they haven't done it in that time, it's going to roll it for them anyway. Tough. You missed your opportunity. But we don't want to be sitting here forever waiting for one person to make their roll because guaranteed they've just popped off to the loo at that point <laughs> and the whole party's sitting around waiting for them to come back. You might choose to say, no, if you pop to the loo or you pop to get a beer or, or snacks or whatever it might be, um, yeah, absolutely fine, but we're not going to hold up the party. Your saving throw was done automatically for you because you weren't here and we cracked on with it. And by the way, you died. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's this section. That's all we need to do. So let's click save. Save those changes, go back to our chat, and let's do that again. So let's open Soriman's character sheet. We've got the goblin selected. We're going to do charm person, and let's see what's different. So straight away, it's prompting that goblin to make the saving throw. Okay, so it hasn't said, I haven't got to click over here. I can just click straight away, uh, it's a normal saving throw, and it's rolling that. It's telling me what the result is, and it's telling me what I need or you know what I actually got and it's green to show that I passed that. It does say very small there wisdom DC 11 but we actually don't need to see that because it's already going to check that for us. So that's much quicker. We still don't have the effect added on the, the condition I should say because that's not what MIDI does. Uh, well at least not in its basic form as it is. Um, but that's much quicker, isn't it? Cast Charm Person. Uh, you've got the receiver has to, is gets prompted to make the roll. They make their roll and it tells you whether they've succeeded. He just rolled another one. This poor goblin is not very good. So because of the settings we had, we're getting that prompt because we want to prompt to say, hey, you need to make that roll. But we can automate that further if we wanted to do and say, oh, don't do that. Actually, just 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 roll it. I don't care. Just roll it and tell me what the response was. So back into that workflow under these saves 
and we said um, prompt players souls with the chat message um, if we wanted to etc and we had uh, the prompt the GM roll saves auto roll and show roll dialogue we could just go auto let's go auto on those and we see what difference that makes for us okay we're back to our chat we'll clear that so we can see it nice and fresh in our chat and uh, once again let's cast that charm person auto no prompt nothing it just did it charm person goblin needed to make a saving throw he failed it it's a six let's do it again charm person bosh passed it F passed it passed it failed it passed it passed it. passed it. how fast is that uh, now, Soryman's got innate spell casting, so it's not actually, because uh, I dumped it on his character sheet, so it's not actually consuming any spell slots, which is why I can just keep hitting the darn thing. Um, but how fast is that? Now, do you want your players doing it that fast? Probably not. You want them to um, perhaps have a bit more engagement with that process. But you might say as the DM, that's what I want. I want it just to smash through quickly as possible we're just interested in results so and keep the combat flowing again Soryman versus 20 goblins how bored is Soryman going to get when it's the 20 goblins go and that player is sitting there waiting for everybody all the goblins to have their turn it's really really fast bosh job done now again we haven't got dice so nice on which actually gives us those graphical dice rolling across the screen i'm sure you're aware of that one if you're looking at automation you would have already come across dice so nice it's beautiful when i have it on for everything except this because i want to keep it pure um so that will slow it up to a certain extent but uh go back into those settings we could look at this front screen so under the gm one We've got high GM catch damage saving throw 3D dice rolls. So there are options here where we can say everybody uses them. But actually, when we're doing these attack damage and saving throws, we want to turn off dice so nice. Don't roll those dice. So you might want them for certain things, but actually really super fast forward your combat. So again, you can tweak even down to that level. There are so many options, so many tweaks that you can do. Obviously, we're going to we're focusing on the core automation stuff as much as possible, right through to some of the detail. Um, but again, those shortcuts built in where you can go, oh, automate DM stuff. You still need to know what those settings are doing, <laughs> so that you can tweak it and have exactly how you want. And importantly, if something's not working the way you want. You know where to go and look. So that's the only settings for those that we need to look at for saving throws. That's it. So now, in the past two videos, uh, I know the last video was quite long for what it did, um, is we now have our automated attacks. I can just... Uh, I, haven't got, I haven't got his thing down there. Um, I can straight away just go, yeah, my quarter staff attack. Oh, look, hang on a minute. I'm too far away for my weapon. That's useful. It's doing that. I can make my attack straight away. It tells me I missed him. And I can cast my spells that require a saving throw straight away. And it gives me those results. So we've already built that just in these two videos, just by a few settings. It is super, super powerful. I'm going to shut up. It's, it's okay for me to keep videos short-ish. <laughs> right, I hope that's been useful. Um, obviously, next video, we're going to carry on with this. And we're going to look at the next thing that we can automate. And the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. Take care, everybody. I will see you in the next one.